This is a beautiful morning, guys. This is what you miss when you sleep in. All right, well, welcome back. It is officially July the 21st, and you guys had asked for a bluegill video in the middle of the summertime when the fish are not on the beds. And just for clarity, there should be there should never be a time during the summer where brim are not on the beds. There will be a few spawning almost at all times. So my first strategy today will be to go to all of the brim beds that I knew where they were back in May. And I'm going to fish around them in hopes that some more fish will be in there spawning. I've already hit one bed before it was good camera light and I caught three brim off of it in about, I don't know, five minutes. It's gotten a little bit more daylight now. There was a brim bed right here. I'm gonna hit this one. Now there won't be brim in all of them, but my hope is that I'll find one of them that's got a few brim in it. So I'm gonna start out right here. There was a huge brim bed right here. This is a gravel point that comes out in the water and there was a huge brim bed here back in May. And if there's none here, we're gonna go around the corner and I know where about three more are. Keeper, but it's closer. It's almost every time it hits the water right here. See it? They're smaller fish, it's taking them in. <laughs> They're just too fast. Immediately. They didn't move very far enough. Back to back, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, so the thing about fishing the spawn in the middle of the summer is, the first thing is not all the beds are gonna have spawning fish on them. The first bed I hit this morning had fish in them, but none of them were spawning. That bed on that gravel bar right there had, I don't know, a hundred bluegills spawning actively. And the only reason I'm leaving is because the bluegill were kind of small, and I'm pretty sure the rest of them are going to be small. This this lake has way too many bluegill. They're way too small. There may not be any bigger ones to catch. But basically how I'm finding these beds is I'm going to the same places that I knew they were, where I knew they were in May, and I'm looking in them to see if there's any grass growing in it. If there's grass growing up in it, I know they're not fanning the beds out, and so I'm moving on. But there was a huge bed up in this cubby hole back in May. And so I'm going to hope and assume that even if they're not spawning, there's still going to be some brim in that area. Shellcrackers, bluegill, all of the above. And there they go. They ran at it. I watched it. Yep, we got it immediately. So these bluegill are the same size as the other bed. These are not very big fish. And they look like they're post spawn. Like these are the ones that were guarding the nest after the eggs were laid. All right, guys, this one's full of bluegill, but they're super tiny. I had to get in here a little close to see them. And I spooked them. I think that's going to be the name of the game today. This lake has got so many bluegill. All these beds are 
gone. There's grass growing in all of it. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it, guys, but let me just show you what it looks like when there's no... Can you see that? All of that was solid brim beds back in May, and that grass has kind of grown up on the bottom. Now, there'll be bluegill in there, obviously. Something just popped right there that looked like a bluegill or a bass. There'll be a few in here, but there's no spawner, so they would have all that grass going off the bottom. All right, so this is one of the bluegill beds that Amy and I sat in back in May and just wore them out. And I can already see there's a whole bunch of fish spawning in here again, about right there. See, I got a fish already. Just trying to keep the boat from getting in there, but uh, that's a super tiny. That's actually a shell cracker. But there's, I can see a bunch of them right there. They've got the water cloudy. I've had a few comments on my channel on these bluegill videos that say respect the spawn. And although I agree with the sentiment in the state of Tennessee, we don't really have to be concerned with that in most of the state lakes because the state does a really good job of overstocking bluegill in these ponds and these lakes. They don't stock you know, threadfin shad and fathead minnows, toughies and stuff like that. They stock bluegill and they're most of the time they're overpopulated with bluegill. So take your limit of bluegill when you come here. Take a limit every time you come. You think that's counterproductive, it's not. Take your limit. If you're in Tennessee, especially in, 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 in the western side of the state, if you go to a state lake, take your limit of bluegill out every time you go because they are way overpopulated. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to back up and reposition on this bed, but they've moved the bluegill beds. Look, can you see them? Amy and I were catching them way up under there, but now they're right here. I hope you guys can see that. So if you'll remember where Amy and I were, we were fishing right up in that hole right there. And the grass has taken over, so the bluegill have just moved out here a little bit deeper but they're still spawning so let me catch this fish real quick I'm, i got the boat a little too close and bluegill go very spooky so i'm trying not to run the trolling motor till the boat gets past it yeah i spooked him all right let me get this up and i'm going to reposition the boat all right so that bluegill bed is right under that that's a mimosa tree in that where that limb comes out, all those bluegill are right there. Bluegill are really bad about spooking. And I got a little bit close and they ran. And I'm barely on the edge of them. They go under the thing. See, I got one that fast. So this is how big these bluegill are. And this is the same as they were back in the spring. It's just this lake doesn't have giants in it anymore. Got another one that fast. And so, People think you need to throw these things back to grow bigger fish, and that's that's not entirely accurate. When they get to be overpopulated as they are in this lake, you really got to take them out. This one's a little bit too small, but this bed is full. We'll get our limit here. I've already got six in a cooler, so I'm fixing to catch 14 more. That'll be my limit of 20. That's the limit on this lake. A lot of TWRA lakes, Tennessee lakes, have no creel limit on bluegill because they're too overpopulated. And this lake, I would imagine, will probably have that rule pretty soon because they are way overpopulated. That's the reason why you're not seeing any big ones. So you know, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is Sunday, July 21st. And these bluegill are 100% spawning and on the beds and i'm actually i think i'm a little late i think that last bed had uh fish fry on the top the baby fish on the top and i think they were um post spawn fish has already got this one but i'm a little close i want to back up but yeah he's got it this one looks like a little shell cracker it is Who 
moving. I saw that fish come and grab it. He's not moving, but he's got it for sure. Yeah, there he goes. Oh yeah, that's a little better fish. Finally. I say better. This is what qualifies as better today. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, this These beds run from way over there to way down here. So that's right in amongst a bunch of them. Oh yeah, he got it immediately. That's not a, that's a tiny one. Not super tiny, but not very, not overly big either. We'll call this a medium one. All right guys, let's talk about the moon phase for a half a minute. Because everybody says the first full moon or the full moon of every month, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it is July 21st, and it is the full moon tonight. Um, and I'm, you can see I'm catching fish. However, I think the point that's most important right here is that these fish are already on the beds. The beds are already kicked out. And these brim are very poor looking. And when I say poor, they're very thin. Like you can't probably tell it on the video, but this these fish are really thin which means they're at the tail end of their spawn which means they probably got on the bed two weeks ago so i put zero investment in that full moon stuff i just i don't think that's a thing i think that's just whoever came coined that phrase just caught them on a full moon one day and just associated it with it and i don't think it has anything to do with the other i think these that other bluegill bed that i hit over there had baby fish on the top of it where they had already hatched so pretty much throughout the summer at all times there should be fish on and off the beds right and like with the situation right here these beds have moved they probably moved 30 feet because originally they were over there under that tree when me and amy were here we parked the boat up on the under there when we were fishing here before and now they're out at the very end of this mimosa tree, way out here in this deeper water. And the reason why they've moved is because it's too much, there's too much grass up there to contend with. And so at my pond, I raked the grass out with a rake and then I treated the grass. The bluegill moved in, they're on beds right now. And at the tail end of this video, if you stick around to the end, I'll show you catching some at my house and they're way bigger than these. But they're on the beds right outside the window there. All right, guys, my setup is I've got six pound line on a spinning rod. This is a pan fish rod from Bass Pro. I use the smallest float I can get. And I've got, this is actually a number six size cricket hook. And I don't put too much emphasis on that. I just like the cricket hook because it's got the long shank, which helps me to get them unhooked. I don't use a weight. There's no need for a weight if you're fishing with worms, but and then I'm just flipping this in there and using the weight of the worm to get it over there. The weight of the worm in the float. And see, I got a fish already. And that's all I'm doing. And really, you don't even have to use a float. Really, you don't. Um, I'm seeing there's a huge bluegill bed over here behind me. I can see the fish surfacing over there so I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine this makes ten so I'm halfway there and it is early in the morning so I'm gonna catch a couple more right here and we're gonna go down and hit that bed because that might be bigger fish I think the only reason you're not seeing these hit the surface is because these are actually in like between three and four feet of water those down there are in shallow water about a foot deep Here, while I'm waiting on this fish, turn around and look at this. Can you see them out on that point over there? That All that surface, breaking the surface. That's all bluegill over there. And, but that's 100% bluegill, and I can see it from a distance. And I'll prove it to you in a minute once I catch. Let me just say we'll catch two more right here, and we'll go hit those up. All right, I'm gonna catch this one more fish and we're going over there. There's way too many fish on that side. Like I'm catching them over here pretty steady. Um, but I can only catch nine more, I think now. 
And so this one, guys, actually is a female and she's full of eggs right now. I'm gonna go ahead and throw her back. But let's go over here because I know that's a ton of bluegill over there. All right, so just keep a watch where that tree is. See all that activity on the surface? I got a momentum on my boat going this direction and I'm gonna cut short. What that's gonna be is there's gonna probably gonna be a hundred bluegill sitting right there. That's what all that commotion is on the surface. So I'm gonna creep up in here as slow as I can. I believe I can catch 10 more and we're gonna do it all right there. See, I'm not even up there where I can see it yet. Ooh, I didn't quite make it. Did I get close enough? Oh, I did get close enough. I got close enough. See? Nice bluegill. That's all that is right there, solid bluegill. This is a tiny worm. I might not be able to cast it very far. I'll see how that works. I barely got there, but it's there. He bit it already. There he goes. Got him. <laughs> these aren't bad fish compared to what I've been getting they're pretty still small see I get another one as soon as it it's just as soon as it hits the water you're just guys this is just like fishing in May there's so many fish I mean I've, I've caught my limit it's, I may have been fishing a little over an hour Oh, I can see them now. There's a bunch of beds out on the end of this tree. Right out there. Look, he got my float. Oh, I got the fish too. One bit my float, one bit my worm. That's a nuts. All right, so I've just counted the fish. I've got 18. I can keep 20, so I can only keep two more. I'm going to see if I can't get a shellcracker out of the deal by throwing a little closer to the bank. It might just be a bluegill, but either way, I'm going to catch two more, and we're going to call it on the bluegill for today. So that's one. That's just a bluegill. I'm going to throw that guy back. He's not up to par. We got my float, and we got my worm all at the same time. <laughs> that fish isn't really much better, but I think that's the name of the game for this lake. There's just too many of them. All right, I got the boat just a hair close, but we'll see if we can't get one anyway. I saw a fish run over there to it. I mean, I got the boat right here on top of it. Yep, he's got it already. Yep. Oh, it's not a very big guy. We'll see if we can't get a big one since we're on our last fish. Oh, he got it. That's a better fish. Finally. That's actually a hybrid shellcracker bluegill hybrid to end the day. This is a pretty fish, look at him. This is just a result of the bluegill and the shellcracker spawning in the same spot. But that's the last one I can keep. All right guys, you can't even see the sun. It is seven. 12 on July 21st and I've caught a limit of bluegill I've technically I've probably caught two limits of bluegill because I threw half of them back because they're so super tiny and it's only been daylight I launched the boat at 5 30 so I've been fishing an hour and a half and I've caught at least two limits of bluegill and I've got a limit in the cooler so it is super early 
I'm gonna go catch another species because I've already got a full limit of bluegill in here. I'm gonna switch to crappie and bass and see what else I can't get in here. But guys, don't limit yourself to fishing the spawn just in May because they will spawn multiple times throughout the summer. And remember, stick around to the end of this video and I'll show you catching them on the beds outside the window of my house where I've raked the grass and they, they're already spawning. Shellcrackers, bluegill, all of them are in there spawning right now. All right, well. All right guys, it is 9.30. I have already left the lake. Already had a limit of brim and the bass and the crappie I could not get to bite. So I'm back here at the house and like I promised you, I wanted to show you the brim that are on the beds here at the house. So let me turn around and let you look through my polarized lenses real quick. So there was a lot of grass kind of like that side over there growing right here and I raked it out and then treated it and killed the grass off and you can see the brim beds were put in here like two weeks ago this is these beds are only two weeks old but you can see them all the way down the bank right there and they go all the way down in front of the sunroom all right so I think I've spooked these fish walking out here because I'm literally like a foot away from their beds. I'm going to see if there's some a little bit further off the bank right there that maybe I haven't spooked. There he is. Got him. This is a big one right here. See, look how much bigger these are in my pond. And the only reason they're this big is because I feed them. So they're still overpopulated in here, but I keep plenty of food in here for them. Oh man, there's a little bitty guy. Don't, don't, don't. No, it's a big guy. I thought it was a little bitty one. That's a tank. Look at this big dude. Now that is a bluegill. That's a giant. And let me pitch it down there where I might not have spooked those out of that bed down there. Yeah, there's already one going to get it. He's got it. I'm going to let him take it for a minute because I think it's a bluegill. Yep. See? Big bluegill. And this one's full of eggs. All the way full of eggs. Oh yeah, I had him. As soon as it hit the water, I had him. Ooh, this is a big guy too. Look at him. Oop, dang, I didn't want to do that. He choked it. I just broke the hook off because it's better for him than to try to yank it out and rip his gills to pieces. So that bed's got quite a few big bluegill in it too. All right, guys. Well, that's a lake and a pond that at the end of July still have bluegill on the beds. I say still, they're not still on the beds. They're spawning again. Uh, some of these fish might be spawning for the first time. Some of them might be spawning for the second or third time, who knows? Um, but don't limit yourself to just the springtime spawn. They will spawn multiple times and you can go fill your cooler up every single time. The general rule of thumb is if you know where there's some beds, there should some bluegill should stay spawning in that area throughout the summer and they'll just rotate in and out in and out in and out but that's going to do it for today i'm fixing to go clean fish get my dinner ready i'll catch you guys next time y'all have a good one